Hello everybody. Welcome to the lab session 7. This is about PWM waveform generation. In this lab session, we are going to see how to configure pulse width modulation subsection which is available in our MSP430 microcontroller and how to generate a particular PWM waveform with a specific frequency. As you can see here, though we have mentioned as a PWM, the PWM is not possible to generate without the help of timer. Basically, we are going to configure the timer as a PWM mode. We are going to configure it in a PWM mode. Now, first of all, what is PWM? As name, it implies pulse width modulation. As you can see here, we represent in a particular waveform a on and off cycle as a period. Okay, so when we say the period of the waveform remains same and the duty cycle that means the on time it changes from minimum to maximum so when we change that the width of the pulse is changing that is called pulse width modulation okay just have a look at it a clear cut demo see uh, we have a, a cycle here now if i increase the duty cycle you can see the pulse width is increasing and also you may notice there is something called average voltage and look at this again there is a on time and there is a off time so the duty cycle is represented as a on time over total time so when there is a change in on time that means there is a change in duty cycle which you are observing over here So, as I keep increasing the duty cycle, you may notice that the on time is increasing. Okay. Now, you may notice the red line over here, which is called as average value. This we are going to use as a control signal for a variety of applications. Especially to control the speed of the DC motor, we will be using this as a control signal. So, by looking at the waveform, you may understand that when I increase the pulse width, the average value also increasing. At the same time, if I decrease it, again the average value is decreasing. Whereas the signal is like, is a 5 volt or even it can be 3.3 volt. This is actually a digital signal, whereas it is producing us a varying analog voltage. By using this concept, a microcontroller can be used to, to control the speed of the DC motor. Let us see how it has been done. You can see this is a simple setup which is called as a hedge bridge. As you can see this uh, four switching element is forming as a bridge type. And you may also notice that we are using here MOSFET which is going to help us in a high frequency switching. Look at the two different diagrams, the way how you can turn on the MOSFETs. Let us assume you are connecting a positive voltage. Uh, it can be a you know, 100 volt or 50 volt, whatever the motor voltage. Okay, So positive voltage and over here ground. If you turn on Q1 and Q4, the current flow will be in the direction from Q1 to Q4, which makes the motor in a rotate in one direction. Whereas, when you turn off this Q1 and Q4, and if you turn on Q3 and Q2, and you can see the motor goes in a reverse direction. That means we are trying to control you now the direction of the DC motor. Okay, how we are going to apply here pulse width modulation? Or in other words, where is the pulse width modulation here? Yes, if you apply the control voltage here permanently, like if you connect to a high voltage permanently, the you know the voltage fed to the motor is going to be again constant whereas when you apply the control signal as a PWM waveform here the motor will not get a continuous voltage which is going to get the equivalent voltage which is based on the duty cycle higher the duty cycle higher the duties you know sorry higher the duty cycle higher the voltage so when you keep changing the duty cycle of the control signal 
which is nothing but you are trying to deliver the different voltage to the motor. That means you are able to make the motor in a forward direction or a clockwise direction with control in speed. At the same time, you can also control the motor other direction along with the control signal over here. In this, we have a pulse width modulation only for controlling a speed. The direction is controlled by using the switches. The direction is not controlled by the PWM waveform. We are only controlling the speed. So hence, you may understand now, the pulse width modulation is going to help the designers to control the speed of the DC motor. Is it only for the DC motor? No. If you look at here, we have a servo. You may also refer some information about the servo motor. The data sheet of the servo motor refers, there should be a three different kinds of pulse width signal which need to be given to the motor at maximum of 20 millisecond intervals. And you can see here, there is a 1 millisecond, 1.5 millisecond and 2 millisecond. We assume that this is our you know, center position, like you want to keep the servo motor on the neutral. Okay, So you have to feed continuously a signal with the 1.5 millisecond pulse width at 20 millisecond interval. In case, if you want to make the servo to 0 degree angle, okay, you want to make it 0 degree, okay, then you have to feed 1 millisecond. The pulse width must be 1 millisecond. In case you want to make from 90, you want to move it to 180 degrees, okay, then you have to feed 2 millisecond. So if you keep feeding, let us assume like 1 millisecond and 1.5 and 2, you will observe that the servo will move, you know, to the left portion, or we say 0 degrees, then 90, and then 180. And if you reverse it another way around, again the servo will turn like wiper, like forward, reverse, forward, reverse, but maximum of 180 degrees can be achieved. For this application also, we have to use a PWM signal. As you can notice here, the frequency of the signal remains same or the period remains same, only the pulse width changes. So these two applications is just an example. The PWM technique is also widely used in AC motor speed control and inverters in lot of applications uh, which applies in power electronics and uh, you know, motor speed control. There are number of applications are there using PWM. Now let us see how to generate PWM waveform using MSP430 microcontroller. This is that MSP430 timer subsystem block diagram. As I told, we have a timer which can be configured in a variety of modes. One of them is nothing but PWM. And is, as usual, you can see here, this is a timer block and in which we are going to have a selection of different clock signals. The clock which has been provided here can be divided further and then it feeds to the timer. It's basically a 16-bit timer, that means we have a 16 binary digits which will be rolling over. It starts, let us assume, from 0. 16 0 and it rolls over at 16 ones that's the width of the timer 16 bit. that means in decimal maximum it can count 65535 as it starts from 0 the speed of the counter is based on the clock if you know what clock you are feeding here you can always calculate what is the time it is going to roll over from let us assume all 1 to all 0 this is possible so that's why we say the hardware based timer is going to help us to find out precise time delays and timeouts. Now this timer is being configured here in a PWM mode. To do that as you can see here we have a channel this is a particular channel, channel 6 
such as we have a different channels over here and every channel you can see there is a counter register ok and the counter register values has to be compared again along with the timer values ok and as you can see here we have variety modes of configuration but we are not going to look into detail all these modes and we have a different controlling techniques also here and finally there will be output signal ok so just let me brief the various operations of a timer is a timer and as I told the clock divider and we can start the timer and the different mode as you can see here is timer is stopped and we can have up counter and the continuous counter that means it repeat repeatedly counts 0 to FF and upper down counter whereas this counting mode is linked to the output unit and as you can see here the output unit can be put in a different modes you may need to read the data sheet for the more information ok and as you can see here toggle set or reset set reset set means you are trying to make a particular pin as a high and then low so this is quite popular these two are quite popular for making a PWM waveforms ok just see again the output mode the timer we are putting in a up mode that means is running from 0 to f, f let us say like 4 f's whereas we, we are not going to reach all the time the top we are going to use timers two count registers like 0 and 1 and we are going to load some values on 0 and 1 the 0 is going to be the highest count and one is going to be the let us assume is a cutoff limit so based on the mode which you configure that means if you are going to configure in let us say in uh, 7 ok in 7th mode if you configure a particular pin of the timer it will be remains high until the value is equals to the register 1 and you can see here then it changes to 0 it remains 0 until the value is equals to counter register R0 so this repeats every cycle just imagine now you are trying to keep the R0 same and if you change only the R1 value so what happens here you are trying to change the pulse width ok and same way if you change the counting value of this one that means you are changing the period so it is possible to change period as well as pulse width now there are some calculations you may need to spend some time again the basic PWM frequency is nothing but the signal with the period ok and uh, you can also calculate what is the duty cycle values and all you have to spend some time on this let me show the source code as I told it is a very simple program and we are just stopping the you know, watchdog timer and as you can see here we are setting the direction of this bit 2 the port 1 bit 2 why we have chosen that if you observe carefully the time uh, you know the timer which we programmed is connected to this particular pin ok and we are setting it into peripheral mode uh, don't think it is like you know uh, we are using the timer output and we are feeding to peripheral mode and these values are obtained from the calculations you may need to go through the calculations once again and this is a mode which I told mode 7 we are setting into the mode 7 and we choose the clock and we say start the timer with up mode the beauty about the PWM one time you have to configure and it runs continuously if at all you want to change the duty cycle then you have to change the CCR value ok CCR this is the output for a particular program what we have written just assume that I am going to modify the values and you can see there is a change in the pulse width when you change the duty cycle value there is a change in pulse width you may need to do the calculation of the total time and the pulse width you need to find out the frequency of a PWM waveform hope you enjoy this video session thanks for watching